Okay, I got it pushed into place. Now I want to take it. Face off the front, finish the bore, and then flip it around and just take just a light skim on that. Now I want to see if it'll locate in here. Okay. Or if I'm going to have to make a, a holding fixture for it. Let's check it with an indicator, I think. An indicator in there and see what it's doing. Ugh. Well, let's see. What can I use to go in there and check that with? Hmm. Looking for my little magnetic stand. Uh, let's see where I put it. Well, just a little magnetic stand that I can put on there and here I'll just hold it, right? Ah. <laughs> uh, I'd have to cut away and go hunting till I find it. Well, can't find that one, so let's try using the Mighty Mag. Indicator stem. A swivel indicator stem. And put it in this way. Okay, that won't work. And this way. If I can get in that far to get that indicator tip in there, it's turning in a long ways. That's pretty close. Uh, let's just give it a little tap, just a little love tap up there, right here. There we go. It's within a, it's within about a thou. Good enough. As long as we're careful now. My mini mighty bags right there. My indicator away. All right. 
Oops. Just unhooked the mic from my pocket here. You know, turn that back out. Um, and we'll just touch and come out and then face that off. Without a handle in there, <laughs> takes a while for me to turn it back. We'll touch the face of the cylinder, the, the sleeve, and we'll zero that. And then that, that's supposed to be 175,000. So we'll go out 175. And we'll lock the carriage. And we'll see what we get. Well, you gotta put it in gear first. All right. So we're gonna run a little shy. We're gonna go 170. Whatever this one is, I'm gonna make them all the same. Yeah, 170. Go. Faced it off nice. Now boring bar. Got back, go back to the boring. Unlock the carriage. Move it over. Crank it in there. And we'll crank it in until it touches. I don't have my uh, diameters set anymore. <laughs> I messed it up. Okay, I'm gonna get you slanted in again. If I can. Tie, I got a string tied around my tripod and I'm tying it to a chair. <laughs> so that I can tip it in. Like that. Give me up a little bit. There we go. Zoom in. We want to focus there. All right, here we go. I'm going to come in here and then I'm going to touch. See in the back of my head, I know. I gotta be able to see too. All right, right there. I am going to just zero my in read out and take five. And then we'll take a cut. I think I left 45 thou. Whatever, even if I did oversize this, it would be no big deal. I would just match a piston to it. Match a piston and ring set to it. So, but it's nice to be able to be close to what, <laughs> what the drawing says. <clears throat> that height. Um, that'll raise the compression ratio a little bit, <laughs> not by much. I left it 45, just in case we had a little bit of wobble when we're doing this. <clears throat> And like I say, we got it within a thou, so. 
not to worry. We get this bore up to size. I'm going to flip it around and take a bow off the, the, the piece that goes into the, to the case. And this could be a slip fit anyway, this bore in here. The only reason I wanted it to press is for this. So the next one I might just make it a slip fit. Lock tight it in place. And then do what we're doing here now. Okay. And give it a little bit of a blow. And check to see what we got. All right. Oops, wrong mic. <coughs> we're not measuring the outside, we're measuring the inside now. We are at 9.05. Right on the money, 905. I'm going to type that in. X.905. Enter. And we want to go to 945. You know, they call it out 945 to 945.5. Your cylinder bore really doesn't have to be that close. <laughs> but that's okay, I'll, I'll shoot for that. So we'll go to 940. And 940. Oop, jump. I should have set up a 45 degree chamfer tool too. Yeah, I can hit the outside with a file and then I'll just take my burr quick or burr knife in the inside and just give it a little bit of an edge break. We only got, when we get this one done, we only got four more to go. <laughs> That's why I say it'll, it's going to take a while to get these done. I stopped just a little bit ago and went out and <coughs> put out some food for the deer. We put the tripod out and, uh, with the game cam on. <coughs> See if we can get some more videos and in pictures. See if the buck comes back snorting. <laughs> With his harem. Somebody was asking how come he still had his horns so I had to look up to see when they lose their horns and yeah, that ain't until March, late February, early March, so and if he's hanging around, <laughs> I'll have to look for the shed. That's pretty good, pretty nice horns. And we'll 
see what we got here. Lock it. I don't know how many times I've said this, but this is how you use these. I, I still see videos where people are trying to get the high spot. We, and that's not how you use them. And they're wiggling it around, and you take it one time through. It is at 940, exactly what we were at. So, all we need to do is take a light 5 thou cut. I'll take four and a half. Should be the last cut on this side. It was cold this morning, but I, when I went out to feed the deer, it was uh, 28 degrees, according to our th thermometer that we have. So, quite the turnaround. Last fall, when we were feeding them out, out in our pa in the field or pasture or whatever you want to call it, yard, our extended yard in the hills, um, there was quite a group of deer. I went through a 50-pound bag of, of corn every two days, putting it out for them. Mineral block about every week. So, and they were showing up. I had, the one night I had deer, raccoon, coyote, and a fox. <laughs> oh, and bats. I never realized there was that many bats flying around in our backyard, but there are. There's the, the game camera, when it was recording, caught them. I don't know how many times flying through. So that's fine. I like I like having them around. They eat up the bugs. Eat the eat the skeeters up. I don't know if they go after the mosquitoes. That's bugs that small, but they go after the bigger bugs. I know. like a taking sand out. All right, this should be it. All right. Oh, there was one light again. I moved the wrong way and then the uh, cord stretches. I don't know if you can hear me down there. <laughs> the cord stretches and then it uh, pulls it off Up a little lower maybe that'll help all right back to where I was what I was doing nine forty five right on the money <laughs> so because that was because I didn't take a free pass to uh, before I measured that the, the before I took that pass, I'm going to take my knife, burr knife here, see if I can get a... I just wanted to take the sharp edge off. Now, outside file. Oh, I got one right here.
All right. Looking good. Looking good, fellas. <laughs> All right. Now we want to just take just a light cut on the back. I wonder if I can clamp on, I'll open it up here. Let's see how true that runs. And it's got a little bit of a wobble. Let's clamp on now. On that little chunk of cylinder. That's better. I'm going to tighten it up a little tighter. There we go. Actually, I could just take some emery paper after it. Maybe that's what I'll do. Some emery paper here. I'll just emery that a little bit. See if that. Here we go. No, it's a little tight. I'm on a little looser net. I'll, I'll take a light cut, I guess. Take it right up to, to the uh, cylinder body. Now, see what the, see what the verdict is now. Oh yeah, perfect. All right, one down. This one is done. Oh, I should break the edge with the burn knife there, too. Want a little bit more of a burr break here. it is that's the side that I'm going to be pushing the rings in when I put the pistons in and I don't want to fight it too bad all right that looks good fits in the cylinder Ed yep Perfect. All right. One down. Four to go. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'm just going to go ahead and do them. Uh, you see me do the one, how the, the struggle, and I'm sure it'll be the same on the second one. <laughs> 